What's good, everyone? Welcome back to My First Kicks. This is episode 134, and this week we welcome QC Kiki Cutie to the podcast. You know her as Kiki, and it's a fun one, you know, after having her on, just being able to to look through social media and see more women in sneakers, and this is just a great chance to have her on and talk about being a woman in sneakers. You know, I don't really get many women guests, and as I try to change that, and I try to, you know, with the help of Jackie or Sneaker Vibes Only, you know, anybody, especially or Keely, like, you know, anybody that I'm able to get on that is has been in the game for a long time, collected sneakers for a long time, has a great appreciation for for sneakers. It's just an honor to have them on. And Kiki has been making content on IG and she's been collecting I, I want to say she's been collecting longer than me because I did start very early, but I think like I I wasn't like in the game until I got my first job. So I mean we talk about that. We talk her her time at all the foot stores that she worked at and just her massive collection and I definitely loved her opinion about you know women in, women in sneakers like the actual women who create sneakers because and also storytelling because you know I think that this podcast is about storytelling and you know how these brands are telling us about stories that we should know about. I just love what people think when they're being told this is the story. Like, it's just interesting because when we, the way we grew up was, oh, this colorway needed needed to happen because of this team. And now we're, we're getting colorways that are about a bagel. We're getting colorways, you know, about a pigeon and we're, and we're getting all these other colorways, but what do they mean to us? And I think, we touch on that a little bit. I definitely want to talk about it more, especially on like a kick talk with a, just like a, 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 a round table of, of guests. So listen, it's a fun episode. I'm excited for y'all to get into, into it. And I mean, shout out to the, the, the Stussy vandals. I've been wearing them this week and I just want, <laughs> if you're not, if you're, if you're, if you're listening to this, you don't see the Stussy vandals behind me, but I've been wearing the Stussy Vandals this week because I really just wanted to undo something when I went back to work this week uh, because I was out for a week. And these shoes are hella comfortable, I gotta say. I, mean, I might as well use uh, a Cali term. But yes, they're hella comfortable. And I will say I forget and I forgot. And I should have just asked people who are into Vandals, should I have gotten a half size? But in the panic of just getting a pair of kicks, like you have to, you have to just get your size and go. I picked the size 13 and yeah, they're kind, I'm kind of like swimming in them, but I can't wait to swap out these laces for the pink laces and see, I mean, I've gotten a couple compliments. So yes, I do love my Stussy Vandals, but onto where you can find Kiki, you can find her on all social medias as at. Q Q C K K K I K I Q D Q uh C U T I E. And she's also, you know, she works on uh, does IG lives. So make sure you're following her and put that put that notification on so you can see when she goes uh, when she goes live. And there's also a link in the description to kick it, which is her show. Um and you know where to find me. I am who is Haas on all social medias. Follow the podcast at My First Kicks Pod. Follow the podcast on YouTube at My First Kicks. Follow the TikTok, which is at My First Kicks as well. And if you have a My First Kicks story, hit me up. Tell me what your first kicks are that just mean the world to you at My First Kicks Pod at gmail.com. Or if you have any guests that you think you'd want to have on this podcast because you love this conversation, Send it to me in a DM or an email. So, on to this week's guest, QC Kiki Cutie.
But before we jump into this episode, I want to talk to you about Drops and Collect by Soul Savvy. With Drops and Collect, you are able to stay ahead of the game. Using Drops, you can enter raffles and set alerts for any restocks. <sighs> All right, well, I can't stop it anyway. Whatever. <sighs> Before we jump into the episode, I want to talk to you about Drops and Collect by Soul Savvy. With Drops and Collect, you'll be able to stay ahead of the game. Using Drops, you can enter raffles and set alarms for any restocks. It would also help you to never miss a release ever again. I mean, my notifications on and every morning my notifications go crazy <laughs> it's right before 10 o'clock. And after you cop some fresh kicks, use Collect to manage your collection. I'm still in the process of adding my kicks. I mean, I have a ton, but it's fine. But what's cool about Collect is that you can also make trades with no fees if you're a current member. But don't worry. If you aren't a member, you just have to pay a flat rate of $8. Now, how do you get these apps? Just use the links in the description of this podcast. Download these apps and grow your collection by also helping the podcast. That's right. Just use the links in the description and start expanding your collection today. Hey, Kiki, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yo, <laughs> this is so dope to have you on. I saw you on If the Shoe Fits. I had to think about it. If the Shoe Fits, <laughs> uh, Mr. Miller's show. And I just like hit you with the instant follow after uh, while, oh, while the you. show was going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, uh, for people who aren't familiar with you, how about you introduce yourself? I am um, on Instagram. I am QC Kiki Cutie. Nobody ever gets it right. I get Quickie Cutie. Nobody ever knows what it is. I'm like, it's QC because I'm from the Queen City. I'm originally from Charlotte. So that's Mm -hmm. the QC. Kiki is the nickname that I go by. um, And then I think I'm cute. So (laughs) that's how I I got my handle. Um, But I'm QC Kiki Cutie on IG. Um, yeah, I love sneakers. I just have a lot, as y'all can see, I have a lot of sneakers. Mm-hmm. I've been into sneakers for, gosh, it's 2002 now. Okay. I, I want to say I, that's, I say 2002 because that's when I started buying them on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was into them, you know, before as um, a middle schooler and all of that, but my parents were buying them. So I say 2002 because that's when I started working at Champs. And that's really when the collection started to really grow. But yeah, I'm just a chick that like kicks. That's that's it. <laughs> I mean, you you got a, a, a mass. You have amassed the following, uh, <laughs> you know, and and your reels are are really dope. I always like seeing like the the heat that you pull out. So thank you. I mean, shout out to you for for being yourself and 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 putting you know your kicks on the map, basically. That's it. That's all I do. Just be me. Y'all get to just get a taste of what I do literally every day when I come in here and get dressed. It's literally what I do. <laughs> I mean, you, I, I think the, the one that the most recently you posted the De La Soul Lowe's, which I behind you right mm-hmm. now too, like, you know, and mm-hmm. it's, it's wild how that shoe has just taking like a full 360, even, even like after, you know, cause like nobody, when those, when those drop the, the re-release of those or the re-retro, mm-hmm. would it be considered a re-retro or a re-release? Uh, I guess it'll be a re-release, but they flipped it. So I don't yeah. know how that would be because they did the high and the low and then switched it. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess we just say a, a revamp or yeah. A, yeah, revamp. We'll revamp. Yeah. And <laughs> And it just like, I don't know, I guess like it didn't hit. And then all of a sudden, just like all the, everybody wants them now. I mean, yeah, rest in peace, so rare. rest in peace, uh, the dove, Dave, the dove. Yeah, uh, but, yeah. but, you know, I, I have such a love for those shoes and I wasn't able to get the pink box pair, but like that I got those and I got the highs as well through mm-hmm. uh, sneakers, which is, uh, which is nice. crazy to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's rare that people yeah. actually hit on them versus like I had to get them resell <laughs> or, you know, after like I didn't get mine till years later. So yeah. lucky you. <laughs> I mean, this is early sneakers. This is like when they was like, you sign on, if you hit it, you, you were there like immediately, right, right, right. like super right. early. This is when it was invite only and only on the phone. Like they gotcha. didn't even, have, yeah, gotcha, it gotcha, was like gotcha, super gotcha. early and I was very hyped to get those. And, um, the, like the spotlight, like, cause like a, AD sneaks do, has done content on that shoe as well. And like, mm-hmm. I'll be, I mean, 
it's it's funny because that's one of the shoes that went crazy on my twitter i posted like a little 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 mm -hmm. sh shoe show show uh, like a little picture of it and then mm -hmm. it was just like 150 likes i was like what why is this, yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is crazy yeah. it's, it's it's always gonna i feel like that's a classic it's always gonna hit it's always gonna be like whoa every time you pull it out it's always gonna hit always 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 oh but you're here to answer the question that i ask everybody each week and that question is what's your first kicks what's that first pair of sneakers you absolutely need to have so i always say because i get asked this question a lot mm -hmm. and everybody's like what's your the shoe that kind of made you fall in love with it and you know really was like yeah this this is it this is my lane and i'm gonna say the air flight turbulence Anybody Definitely that time. has followed me for anybody, any amount of time knows that's like the most coveted pair in my collection out of the hundreds that I have. Mm -hmm. um, but the Damon Stoudemire, I was obsessed with him. I had the biggest crush on him. I play basketball as well. I'm retired now, but he was one of my favorite players at the time. And like I said, uh -huh. I had the biggest crush on him and I had to have that shoe. Like he was the one doing all the promo for it. So I was like, I got to have this shoe. And when it released, it actually happened to be around like my birthday. Mm -hmm. So that weekend, my parents were like taking me and some friends to Carowinds. Like I'm from Charlotte. So we're going to Carowinds. And there used to be a mall right there in front of Carowinds. So I was like, my parents were like, all right, well, we'll go get you your shoes first. And then we'll go to Carowinds. So I knew I was about to be stunting on everybody. Yeah, you I had were. My fit already, <laughs> I had my fit already on. So I had to take, I had some beaters on. I just threw those off, put my shoes on. Mm -hmm. um but it also was a pair that I bought with my best friend her mom gave her the money as well even though it was my birthday mm -hmm. she gave her the money as well and so she also got a pair and she passed away in 2008 uh -huh. so it, it's been I'm sorry 2018 my bad um 2018 so it's it was something that I had to have it's like our connection mm -hmm. um because it was like one of the first pairs of shoes that we like actually bought together so I tell people that's why it, it's always going to be the most coveted pair. Once I got it back, I just, I cried like a baby. I ain't going to lie. I, I had the OG box, the OG card, the OG paper. They're pristine. I'm just like over the moon. But that's that's the shoe I, I definitely say I would give it credit for really just kind of starting my, I guess we can call it obsession. I don't know. Love, <laughs> strong mean, yeah. passion. passion whatever pa your you passion. <laughs> yeah. Hobby, passion. Strong, um, strong passion. This, this is the air flight turbulence, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Cause I got a little a little synopsis for the for the listeners here. Um popular popularized by NBA Hall of Famer Gary Payton, the Nike Air Flight Turbulence sneaker is a classic for the court and the street. First introduced in the 90s, the shoe is a, the shoe is dressed in white and white with black. Oh my god, I'm over here flum, fumbling. <laughs> white white with black and gray accents. Mixed materials cover the upper layer layered and wavy overall overlays the chunky mm -hmm. sole creeps up into the midsole accented mm -hmm. with a swoosh check mark B below a treaded outsole helps provide grip premium grip control so i've actually mm -hmm. never seen this shoe i'll be honest really oh my god yeah, yeah. that's like my baby <laughs> i have the white and black ones i have a couple of different colorways but mm -hmm. i have that original white and black with that patent leather on it and i don't know it just it did something to me. It was very simple, but like I said, I think it was, it just did something to me. Um, and like I said, it's like one of my, if, if it's that, it's that pair that people like if your house is burning down and you can only grab one mm -hmm. pair, that's going to be the pair I grab. Cause it was uh, the hardest for me to find, I think too, out of all of mine. I mean, I hate that question because <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, knock on wood. <laughs> I don't never want that to happen. No, God, for please sure. Don't that happen. For oh. sure. I mean, that's tough. I mean, uh, uh, it's wild that you, I mean, sorry that you, you know, my condolences and Thank you know you. the the fact that this shoe has has such sentimental value means so much more than say like you know somebody being like, oh, I just got a you know a, a pair of my grails, and you're like, why are they oh, your yeah, grails? No. And why they're your grills because yeah, they cost so much yeah. money but like yeah that's not yeah. nah, you know like the the idea of just like having a personal such a personal collection connection with something mm -hmm. like it means more and it can it's like that moment of just like seeing like the lights just hit it and you're like man this mm -hmm. shoe you know that's it yeah. that's it and that to me that's what makes collecting such a joy because i everybody has different stories behind their sneakers and different 
different ones in my collection have different stories. Like, oh, I remember when I got this, it was this. And I remember when I did this and this shoe. And mm-hmm. so to me, that's that's the that's the passion behind it, I think, versus just having a room full of shoes that might have a lot of value, mm-hmm. like monetarily. But I like the story. I like the nostalgia behind the shoe, especially some of my older pairs. I'm all about nostalgia. Anybody that knows me, I'm like, I love nostalgia. Give me reach bags. Give me the 90s vibes. I'm here for it. Give me all of that. Yeah, I mean, listen, 90s, I always say 90s basketball sneakers is undefeated. I think the that, best. that they That's need to just, face. yeah, they need to just run all of them back out. Just be like, here you go. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, originally, uh, don't change yeah. nothing. Just give us, <laughs> give us the shoe, <laughs> how it works. If, the, if yeah. Nike was like, if Nike was like, all right, you get to go in and you get to do one collection. I'll be like, all right, 90s basketball, just run them through. Boom. Run it. <laughs> run it. Go down from 90 on to 99 and run them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, like, I mean, you said you did you grow up in the 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 Queen City all your life? I did. Mm-hmm. I'm born and raised in Charlotte. I'm currently in Durham. So I'm still in North Carolina. I'm a couple of hours away from Charlotte, but I am a true charlatan. There's not many of us, but I was born and raised in Charlotte. I mean, man, listen, I love I, <laughs> Charlotte is the home of my one of my favorite groups of all time. So, you know, little brother. I love little brother. OK, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so <laughs> I, I have such respect for Charlotte. And, you know, you know, like you still, every time I hear it, you hear uh, say it was it. PD Pablo, you hear, I always hear PD mm-hmm. Pablo in my head every mm-hmm. time I hear Charlotte. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but what was like the sneaker scene like early on? Was it just like, was everybody on it? it was, was. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a fun time. Mm-hmm. It was a fun time, especially like late, late nineties, early two thousands, like I said, which is when I kind of really start collecting. It was really fun. Mm-hmm. At that time I was working at East Le Mall and East Le Mall in Charlotte was, the mall like it was the mall that you go to and stunt in your outfit and all the sneaker store they had all of the major sneaker stores in that mall Mm -hmm. um so it was a it was a really good time I think people were really into sneakers in Charlotte during that time I can't really say that we have like a like an iconic shoe like you know Mm -hmm. how like DC might have like the New Balance Mm -hmm. or or Boss might have like their New Balances and stuff and I can't think of a particular, we were just really into Jordans, I feel like. It was just Jordans. Jordans I mean, and whatever else, but mostly Jordans. That was, like, the biggest thing. It's, like, getting the newest release. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like Charlotte kind of is... I, I, felt it, like, I felt like it would be Jordan Central because, I mean, he went to yeah, UNC. Carolina and all yeah, that, yeah. So yeah. it's very Jordan-heavy. Um, and I feel like with, with Charlotte, it's a very... Most people that are from Charlotte that are true to Charlotte very simple style, not very flamboyant, very simple. It was like tall tees and jeans for the guys and then your Jordans. Um, the chicks, it was whatever, some jeans and a tank top or whatever and your your kick. So it was pretty, pretty simple. I kind of was different. I kind of mm-hmm. pushed the envelope. So I never really fit in, which is why pr- people probably don't think I'm from North Carolina. They're like, wait a minute, you from North Carolina? People are like, oh, I thought you were from such and such in New York. I'm like, nah, I'm from North Carolina. Oh, you ahead of the but, game is what you say. You yeah, was it, was, it was really very simple. And I was always trying to like push the envelope and be mm-hmm. different and try new stuff. I would make my own jeans and all kinds of crazy Man, stuff. You make your own jeans? <laughs> oh my God. I was, I was gluing mirrors <laughs> on my jeans and writing on it with this. I was doing all kinds of stuff. Damn, <laughs> that's wild. That's Just, fire, though. Yeah. That's fire. I mean, I always had in, in my high school. There was always that like a couple kids that were super, just like I wouldn't say eccentric, but like they mm-hmm. were just like they would like to take the chances and make their own stuff instead of just being yeah. like. I mean, everybody's wearing when I went to high school. Everybody's wearing Echo, same Sean, thing. John. Like it was just same thing through the wall through the mm-hmm. halls. So they were just yeah. like, you know what? I'm gonna just you know make my own. I'm gonna be different. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be different. That was me. I was that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you said you, you worked at Chance, but what was your first job that, that like, you were like, oh, all right, I'm going to get some my sneakers with this money? My first job was Dunkin' Donuts, Baskin Robbins. Okay. It was down the street from my house, so I was slanging donuts and making <laughs> coffees and milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. It was That was my first official job. Um, until I got hired at Champs, and I was like, "All right, I'm out, y'all, because this is where I really want to work." But, yeah, yeah, it, it was fun. <laughs> what was what was your process of Champs? Like, were you were you were you running every, every like you were just like, "Yo, you got to get this this 
the sneaker protector. Yeah. You selling all the sneaker yeah. Yes, I was that. <laughs> I was that chick. Um, I was the go-to because back then, of course, they don't do it anymore now. But mm-hmm. they had the one, two, three, and they would push it where you had to sell the socks, the insole, and the cleaners. Um, so I, I had it down to a science. At Champs, we had the shorts, so I rolled my shorts up a little bit higher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, I always had fresh kicks on. I always had my little lip gloss on. My hair. I had hair back then. <laughs> Uh, believe it or not, so I always had my little fresh doobie. Mm-hmm. So I had my fresh doobie with my hair kind of flowing down, and you know, people would come in. I'm like, "Hey, welcome to Chance." Put my leg up on the table, and <laughs> from my insoles, I would like take. I was really good at finding the shoes. Like I knew our stock, which is why my room kind of looks like a stock room. Mm-hmm. Like it looks like a Foot Locker in there. But I was really good at finding the shoes. So I was fast, and I would like have before my shift. I would set up insoles of all sizes. Mm-hmm. And I would just flip it out real quick. And when they try it on, they'd be like, oh, this feel real good. And I'd be like, well, that's because it's got an insole in it. And I would always <laughs> sell insoles that way, always. Uh-huh. The socks were always, like, buy something. So that was really easy. Um, the protector, I would, like, do the little demo. I'd spray the protector on and pour mm-hmm. some water on it. Um, but I, man, you, you had know, a couple guys. Science. Yeah, man, I used to sell. <laughs> I was selling. My checks used to be really good. I'm t- I mean, I made, I think. During Christmas time, I make like seventeen hundred dollars on a check just from yeah. commissions and stuff, Damn. you know, during that time. Yeah. And at sixteen, seventeen, that's a that's a gay. It's good money. That's crazy. Um, that's that's a that's, lot. That's you rich yeah. on that point. So You're I like... was doing good with that. Like with the I always did really well with that. The dudes, I'd be like, Yeah, I give you my number if you buy these shoes and buy this cleaner and some socks. And then I get on the walk in, be like, Hey, I'm gonna be in the back. Let me know when they leave. <laughs> Oh, I thought you gave him, like, the reject hotline. You remember the reject hotline? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I'd just be hiding out in the back until they leave, and then look, my, uh, the cashier would be like, yeah, they gone. I'd be like, all right, cool. I'm coming back out. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. <coughs> I, could, I can't believe Horrible. that. I mean, oh, oh, my God, that, that took a lot out of me. <laughs> Because, like, uh, I've never been in that position because, like, I'd probably be so upset right now. But, like, imagine yeah. just being like, yeah, you know, I want to go pick up some fresh J's. And, and I was about to, I was about to back the, the, the homie, uh, nope. homegirl. And no, she and never I'd came back. And I done upsold you. I done upsold you like crazy. But got you to buy all kinds of stuff and then just dipped out on you. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> they had the money. It's okay. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> totally fine. The I mean, were you there for any crazy releases or you know? I'm trying to think. I honestly, <clears throat> I can't remember off the top of my head like cra- anything crazy. Just a normal line waiting at the gate, like. But I don't, rem- I don't have any like super crazy stories um, for releases mm-hmm. that I can remember. You know, it's been a long time ago. But off the top of my head, I can't really think of anything crazy other than just you know people wanting to slide you money for. Hey, can you hold me this pair? I'll give you this if you hold me this pair. Um, I never backdoored any pairs. Um, I just, I just didn't. I mean, at that point, at our store, we were a bigger store, so we got a lot of sizes. So mm-hmm. I just, we didn't really have to like backdoor that much. For the most part, if you were there, you you could get it. So that's the good thing I liked about back then. If you were there and came to the store when it released you were going to get it. Now, if you came in a couple of days later, then I came in a promises that we were still going to have it depending on what shoe it was. Mm-hmm. But we didn't really have to do any backdoor like that at all. Like, I mean, not to say none of my coworkers didn't take some money and, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I didn't, but I know it probably happened, but it, I don't remember anything too oh, yeah. crazy. Like any job, any, every, somebody scheming. Anytime. Somebody doing something. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody doing something. You know, uh, I mean, shoot, I worked in candy and people were scheming with candy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I worked in candy for six years, right? And then wow. the, the craziest thing, the craziest scheme was we would, we would, uh, well, not we, I wasn't part of it, but I found out mm. later and I was like, why didn't you tell me? Because that, that would help me out. <laughs> so what they would do is one of the dudes uh, would, I, I was in charge of like ordering ordering the candy and then what they mm-hmm. would do is they would see how much I was ordering take 
like and be like oh no we need one more and take a bag full God, and there was a pizza sh- there was a pizza shop an expensive pizza shop next to us and they would be like yo i'll trade you this whole bag of candy got you for a whole whole pie so it's like bartering it's a lot yeah, of bartering going a lot on. of bartering gotcha, gotcha. and so yeah that a lot got of that you. that was the that was the scheme i knew I don't know what else they probably did. Probably did something else. Ain't no telling. Ain't no telling. (laughs) Slang and candy. Mm. Slang and candy. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, so you was working there in high school. So like, were you? Yeah. You were just like fresh to death in high school. Heck uh, yeah! Heck yeah! I stayed with all the new releases. Like Mm -hmm. I was known in high school as the chick. Still, even then, back then, the chick that had a lot of sneakers because obviously I was just rotating them out. Um, especially like when we had our fifty. I'd have a stack of shoes in the back with my name on top of it. Like, these are Kiki's. Don't mess with it when we had our 50. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yes, I worked I worked for Foot Locker, Inc. all through high school. So, my junior year, so all the way up until. You went to Foot Locker? Well, it's all the same. Foot Locker, Is Inc. Oh. I always say Foot, yeah. The <laughs> Champs, Foot Locker, and um, Foot Action are all under mm-hmm. Foot Locker, Inc. So I basically started at Champs and then in college I transferred to Foot Locker, which mm-hmm. I like I said was an easy transfer because it's all the same company. Yeah. And then when I came home during the holidays, I would work at Foot Action back at Eastland. Because like I said, it was all our checks all say Foot Locker Inc. So mm-hmm. it's still if I'm in the system in one, I'm in the system in all of them. So uh-huh. I had the same employee no- yeah, I had the same employee number and everything. So I worked there from junior high school all the way all the way till I graduated college Mm -hmm. so and then I finally was like yeah okay I'm 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 done with (laughs) y'all they were like no be a manager take a store I was like no no I'm good I'm good (laughs) (laughs) like so I mean when was your first taste of like the sneaker community and and like sneaker culture Mm, that's a good question I would probably say really more recent like it's, mm-hmm. it's it, and that's surprising that I worked in the you know the stores and I was around the sneakers but I wouldn't even say then that I was technically like really super active in the community mm-hmm. I wouldn't say I really got really active until maybe five years ago mm-hmm. you know kind of really starting being like huh I want to connect more with people that are into sneakers as well and then definitely during COVID, I think everybody got way more active because we were bored and didn't have anything else to do. So we mm-hmm. started connecting more through social media and doing lives and doing this and doing that. Um, and then I started going to a couple like sneaker events and sneaker shows. So, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of like introduced me and I was like, OK, th- this is cool because I-, I always kind of was like to myself a little bit I was like most people didn't realize how many sneakers I had they mm-hmm. knew that they would see me with a lot of sneakers like wearing different ones but mm-hmm. nobody knew how many it was like and like in college just like my dorm room was full of sneakers like stacked I, I, I gotta hear on the walls what, what, did you yeah, come in did so. you come in with like five pairs and then it just like ballooned oh no I had a car full because I'd already had them you gotta think I'd yeah. start buying in high school so mm-hmm. When I like moved to college, my dad, of course, helped me move and my mom. Um, but my dad's van at the time had like all my, my clothes and just like, you know, little random stuff, tubs and random mm-hmm. stuff you take to college. My car was full of sneakers. My trunk was full of sneakers. My back seat was full of sneakers. The front seat, it was literally just sneakers stacked up everywhere because they're like, why do you have to take so many? I was like, <laughs> I need options. Like, I can't limit this to 10 to 15. No, no, no. Because I go crazy. I need to have options and not if I would rotate. So sometimes if I come home <laughs> on the weekend, I would kind of like rotate five to 10 out so I can kind of keep fresh pairs. And of yeah. course I was still buying pairs because I worked at Foot Locker. So oh, while you're at school yeah. too? <laughs> yeah, it, it was a lot. It, it was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, crazy. I mean, were you able to like, what was like the perception for you, for you to have, you know, being, you know, as 365 days every year just every semester you out there fresh to death fresh like, fresh what, to death. what was it what was it like like was people stopping you you know yeah you- it was funny because I started this thing on campus mm-hmm. my sophomore year um and I was doing it my freshman year I always was dread like they were like who's this freshman that's always looking cute to go to class you know in college you look like a bum when you go into class you just throw on a hoodie and some slides and go mm-hmm. to class. Yeah. My freshman year, I was looking cute every day. Like I'm a freshman, like I'm looking cute. 
Um, and then of course, you know, you get older as upper class, you realize, yeah, nah, I'm just waking up five minutes before class start. I'm not about to sit here and be trying to be cute. So what mm-hmm. I did was I did fresh Fridays. So every Friday, everybody knew on campus, Kiki gonna have on something. She gonna be fresh. I might be fresh a couple other days too, but Friday is guaranteed. I'm yeah. gonna be fresh <laughs> on Friday. You did so, opposite yeah, casual was, Friday. You were like, yeah, I was fresh <laughs> Friday. I was fresh. You ain't know if you was gonna get heels or some crazy sneakers, something. I was gonna be fresh mm-hmm. though. So I've always kind of been known for that. You gonna you gonna get some shoes. You are gonna get something. You are gonna get some styling. Even in, in high school, same thing. It was on game day playing basketball. I wore heels mm-hmm. to class um, that day on game day. So I was always like, I didn't hurt your feet for the game. Mm mm. No. Nah. Cause my thing was no, my you, thing was you my- build different. <laughs> yeah my thing was like i wanted to be and i would like change back into my cute outfit after mm-hmm. the game so i would shower and miss like half the boys game because i'm showering getting back cute and walking out like all right after i didn't score my 20 points like all right cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> because i the, then the perception was if you played basketball you didn't like guys so right. i was like fighting that i'm like no no i'm very girly very feminine i just happened to hoop too so i was like i just have i just happened to put 40 on the board don't worry yeah, about yeah, it I just, I can't hoop, but I, I was fighting that stick but like no 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 i'm very girly i like boys no <laughs> so that was a lot of that too well i mean i mean definitely talk about that i don't uh, you know i i don't know a lot of women hoopers or women in basketball mm-hmm. so just like what like i had i've had uh tubby on um Jackie mm-hmm. okay. so, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like she was telling about you know she she went to a, i think she went to a she said d2 or d1 school like what what, mm-hmm. what what division were you in and like what what was it like just like battling being that perception of you well it started in high school because i like did of course i started playing when i was young like church leagues and stuff i've been playing mm-hmm. basketball since i was like six Mm -hmm. um and it kind of like caught and my dad realized hey you kind of good now mind you I have two two brothers but I'm the athlete so I mean he had these boys and then he had me and I was the one that was the athlete so he Mm -hmm. was like hey you're kind of good at this so we (laughs) were I'm gonna invest some time in you and some money into you doing this um but high school is when I really kind of realized wow there's like this perception that if you are a chick and you play basketball that you are just automatically a lesbian and I'm Mm -hmm. like oh that's not the case not all of us like Mm -hmm. but that's the perception so you just fight this whole thing of you're just like super hard yes I am a tomboy um but I call myself like a cute tomboy because I can be very girly even in my tomboyishnessness Mm -hmm. um so just like fighting that and then the same thing with college so I went to Wake Forest um oh excuse me and (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so i well i i the i tried to walk on my freshman year uh-huh. um and i it, it lasted for a little bit but there was some conflict between the coach and the star player at the time because it was very it was very love and basketball ish i don't know if you've seen love and basketball course, where it's yeah. like, i'm gonna take your spot it was very mm-hmm. that it was giving much that like I'm like, yeah, I am trying to take your spot. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. And I mean, it's fair game, you know? Um, so I I was on the team for a hot set and that, that was very short lived. Um, but I did play like intramurals and all of that all through college, which was really fun. Um, because mm-hmm. our team was really good and we got to play other schools. So it was it was still fun and I got to play. So, you know, a little bit of resentment because I wish I would have played, but I got a hot second in for a little bit. So <laughs> I'll take what I can get. I'll take what I can get. But same thing with that. It's that persona of you're very tomboyish. You, you know, you don't like guys. And it's like, no, I'm not that. I'm I'm not that at all. No. You're like, nah, I'm going to pull out these heels real quick. <laughs> I'm going to put something cute out on you. I'll put my little tight jeans on. Like, nah, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, the, so like, Look, I mean, I played, obviously I played, I mean, I played a lot of ball too as well, but I didn't get as far as you, but the one thing that I did take from it is the, just that, that like, is it like the will to win or like the, you have to win? Uh, what am I trying to think? What's the, the term of it? But I think that it's like I can't lose. The, the I hate. I'm a, mm-hmm. not like I'm like a sore loser, but I if you I hate lose, losing. yeah, you hate, hate losing. losing. Nobody yeah. likes losing. Yeah, no. 
did that transfer over to sneakers like when you weren't able to, to to cop kicks or like was it like were you competitive that's what i'm looking at where did you have mm-hmm. a competitive nature did it and did it transfer over to sneakers you know i don't think so because i'm very on the court i have a totally different persona like i'm a totally different person um but i think with sneakers i've always been very patient because i've always felt like if it's for me it's going to come to me so i'm that patient sneakerhead like i'm not the one i don't take l's super 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 hard because i'm like it's okay i'll get it eventually and i'm very patient so i'll wait a sneaker out years like i'll know i want a sneaker and it might have came out and i didn't cop it for retail but i'm like i'm definitely not paying resale so i usually just wait it out until people get tired of it forget about it the price drops and then i pounce on it and Mm -hmm. then i can bring it out and people are like oh shoot I forgot about those. I used to have those. Mm -hmm. And now it's almost like fresh all over again because it's out of sight, out of mind because I don't like necessarily wearing things when they're hot and Mm -hmm. hype. Like I may get a new release, but I might sit on it for months before I actually wear it because I don't want to look like everybody else and Mm -hmm. have the same shoe and post the same. We're all posting the same shoe. Okay. Yeah. We know we all got it, but you know, so I'm very patient. I mean, I will wait years Like, I just bought a pair last week that I have been looking for probably for about five years. Mm -hmm. So I'm super patient. What are those? (laughs) I can't tell y'all. Y'all got to watch the show. I got this show called Reach Backs on IG that I do with one of my my brothers. Uh Uh, It's called Reach Backs. It's on IG. I usually always tell about it, but I'm trying to keep it a secret because everybody that follows me has been, I've been talking about this shoe a lot Mm because i've been wanting it every time somebody asks me what shoe i'm looking for it's always mentioned and i finally got it so y'all gonna be surprised it's a surprise all right all right all right you gotta gotta tune in little (laughs) bait you gotta tune in (laughs) gotta 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 get those viewers gotta get those gotta get it's very (laughs) rare it's a very rare shoe a lot of Mm -hmm. people may not have ever seen it but it's super rare it'll never be retro it'll never be re-released ever so I mean, I'll check be tuning in. I'm going to definitely, definitely check it check out. Check it out. Check it out. The, uh, the, the, I mean, we talked about, you know, like winning and losing and mm-hmm. the, what was it like just being, were you, did you consider yourself a sneakerhead while you were collecting? Because I know you said that you weren't, you weren't, you didn't like find the community until five years ago, but like were, mm-hmm. along this whole entire time, you have been collecting, but like, mm-hmm. were you being mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm a sneakerhead? Or like, did that term mean something else to you during that time? I, th- I thought I was. I definitely thought I was. I knew, you know, my parents definitely thought I was too, because every time they asked me what I wanted, it was always sneakers. Mm-hmm. Um, So I thought I was, I just never really, I wasn't very vocal with it like you said I've been collecting for a long time so when I did pop on to the scene you know being more active in the community it was funny because for one I look younger than I really am which is a blessing um same here same so here. people are always like who's mm-hmm. this little young chick coming on to the scene mm-hmm. and not realizing like no I've probably been collecting longer than you I just was like chilling like I wasn't on like Nike talk and I, I wasn't in a lot of that you know early on when it started off because I was just in my own little world, you know, Mm -hmm. doing what I do. But so a lot of people were just like, who is this? And she's new. And then I'm like, no, I'm not new. (laughs) I'm far from new. Been doing this for a long time. I'm just new to Mm y'all, but I'm not new to to being a sneakerhead. But yeah, I I consider myself a sneakerhead. I know some people like different terms, Mm -hmm. whatever collector. I definitely collect. I am a collector as well, especially since I have you know older pairs I definitely like collecting and keeping it um even pairs that are crumbled I still have because Mm -hmm. of the nostalgia the keepsake so I definitely consider myself a collector as well but you know whatever you want to call it sneakerhead sneaker collector I don't whatever sneaker kind of whatever I'm all of it I'm a, um, but I, I did like think using, I was a sneakerhead. I like using sneaker enthusiast, but that too, yeah. yeah. That one, sneaker enthusiast. I'm all of that. Give me yeah. all of that. Give me all of it. <laughs> the I mean, you know, normally I don't be like, you know, what what is it like being a woman in, into sneakers? But the you know, with the and I, I keep staring at the Tiana Taylors behind you, so the box. <laughs> so you know, you know, we have had you know a, a couple. I want to say a couple, but I feel like it's more. But there are s- several women who have, have the opportunity to to create sneakers, right? You know, Tiana mm-hmm, Taylor is one mm-hmm. of them. Uh, 
Vashti, Vashti. Mm-hmm. Is it Vashti? Yep, right? Vashti, yeah, 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 Vashti, Vashti, Melody um, Asani, yeah, Melody Asani, yeah, mm-hmm. Beyonce. Um, yeah. And uh, and now it's like you know now now we're getting more women based sneak like directed towards women before it was just you know painted pink and here you go yeah you know? yeah. What, yeah. What, <laughs> I, <laughs> since you've been collecting for so long and and i'm just very curious of like what has been your your take on on or your thoughts on just like you know you've seen how women's sneakers has evolved and mm-hmm, and then you also mm-hmm. seen women get into sneakers and mm-hmm. create their lanes and stuff like that mm-hmm. but like what what is it what is it like to you to see that it's been interesting it's been very interesting it's got it's a uh, exciting um and sometimes it can be a little disheartening it's exciting because now I feel like a lot of women that have been collecting for a long time that were wearing sneakers in the 90s, early 2000s and on, it's, I wouldn't say we hit it, but it wasn't necessarily popular Mm -hmm. to be a woman and have hundreds of shoes. It wasn't like, that's not really that cool. That's not really ladylike. That's weird, you know? So, Mm -hmm. and even to this day, I get it sometimes where that's weird, where people think, you know, they're like, well, do you, you always wear sneakers? Is that all you wear? That's, ooh, that's not ladylike. That's not sexy. Mm-hmm. So I still get that to this day, even with it being more popular for women to be into sneakers. I still get that all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so the exciting part is that now we can kind of be out in the open with it. Like we can just be like, no, we have sneakers as well. We probably have more than you do. We just didn't know it. We weren't as out in the open with it. So that's the exciting part. The downside of it and the disheartening part is it can get a little watered down because Mm -hmm. right now it's a fad. So a lot of these brands and companies are taking advantage of that a woman into sneakers is popular right now. It's marketable. It's Mm -hmm. campaign-ish. You know what I mean? So it kind of waters it down a little bit when you get um, some of the women that aren't really into the community and really know much about sneakers and fresh into it, but they just know how to make really good content. And so Mm -hmm. now they've popped off, but you know what I'm saying? They don't, they're not really in it. You know, there's not that same passion for it. Mm-hmm. So that's where I can get a little murky and watered down. And it's never like any hate or anything, but you do want to see people that have been into it for a long time where you can tell they're really passionate about it. They know the history of sneakers. They know the names of sneakers versus, well, it's just really cute. And I liked it with my outfit. Mm-hmm. So it can get a little tricky at that point where it's like somebody like me, that's, obviously knows the names and you know who wore them and this and that and it's like it's cute I don't remember the name of it it's like (laughs) kind of kills me a little bit so it's it's good and bad it's good and bad so it's it's definitely opened up a lane for me you know um for people like me that create content around sneakers to be able to like grow and so I mean it like I said it's it's good it's Mm -hmm. good overall it's good it's just I don't like when it gets a little watered down and really just commercial you know and it kind of takes the the passion out of it I don't really like that too much no yeah I I mean I mean not to hate on Amma Manir but like I feel like you know Amma Manir started so strong and Mm -hmm. and I think that their their focus is too much story oriented you know Mm -hmm. like for for it to actually make an an impact right and so Mm -hmm. like I think that just like like it, it expands to every because they're trying so hard, like so hard to be mm-hmm. like, you know, this shoe means mm-hmm. this and I need mm-hmm. you to do this so that we can do this together. And we're just like, we're, so some, you feel like it's like they're trying too hard, basically. Yeah, I think that they're trying like, too hard. And I feel like it's getting watered down a little bit, too. Right. It's, so a, it's, it's a combination. Definitely a mix of that, you know, I mean, Growing up, like we both grow, we both know it was just like, you know, we just want a sneaker that's like a, a, somebody on the court war. Like, we don't need it to be like mm-hmm. the next yeah. thing to stop the next, like a Super civil war. Deep and, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel you. Which can be nice. But like you said, I think it's just all in how you do it and not trying too hard. And I tell people that even with creating the content that they, that they create, don't try too hard because like you're picking up on it. You feel like they're just trying too hard to push a certain thing and you're feeling it as a consumer. Mm-hmm. And I tell people that all the time, like people can feel when you're trying too hard and when you're like doing too much and you're kind of getting away from what was genuine to you, mm-hmm. people feel it. So I always tell people, you know, be genuine to who you are and like, don't try too hard. Just be you. And yeah. that's good enough. Like that's good enough. <laughs> I I mean, content creation is such a, 
like I, it tires me out because like I feel like I've seen too much of the same stuff and then that and then mm. when I try to get creative with my stuff or like mm. try to you know try to push this podcast and stuff like that it, mm. it just it, it feels like oh I'm just trying to do what they're doing I just not not doing it as consistent as them and I'm just like mm. I don't want to do this anymore <laughs> like no <laughs> I, I can feel that I can yeah. understand that and I hear people say that but it's just like you know keep doing what you're doing how you do it because even if it's like we may be doing the same thing so obviously there are tons of people that have sneaker podcasts clearly it's not like you invented it Mm -hmm. but you still have your niche to it it still has Mm -hmm. your kind of stamp on it it's still yours so it's still you can create your own lane and doing that so it's like still do it still push it i'm not not talking about that i'm talking the podcast We 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 a hundred <laughs> we hundred thirty three episodes deep like we 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 so you here like somewhere yeah yeah but you we know but it's like I get though it can feel yeah. like you're kind of like doing the same thing and get tired of seeing the same thing and that's why I try to like push the envelope as much as possible but be me and I think that's but that's natural to me to like mm-hmm. not fit in that's always been my thing yeah. so it's not really out of my norm to not fit in and to pull shoes that aren't popular or that haven't been worn like y'all haven't seen since 2005 you know mm. i'm gonna pull that sneaker out y'all gonna be like what the world like where'd she get this from and why why is she pulling this out when she could definitely pull out you know it's like you know i like what? to be different and push it <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's the thing i think that the and i've said this over and over on here you know the one thing that's currently lost in this game that we're in now that is that people don't want to be different anymore and Mm -hmm. I think I think it's like you know I I said this on Twitter about like the game has become a lot more about relevancy and I've never cared about relevancy because it wasn't about being irrelevant even when I was collecting sneakers like when I first got my first job in 2008 no, 2006 and and I was just like all right first pair I'm gonna rock these and I was getting like I bought a pair that was sitting on a website on Skate Park of Tampa. It was a Nike SB khakis. I bought those mm-hmm. and people were telling me like, yo, I can't believe you got those. And I was just like, mm. I was just like, what? And nobody else was wearing them. Everybody else is like, you know, wearing regular sneakers. Like this is when be- being like a, like being into stuff, it was being mm. uh, be, you're basically a nerd if you're into games you're mm, a nerd gotcha, you're into sneakers gotcha. you're a nerd yeah, yeah, you're into yeah, comics you're, you're a nerd. nerd yeah and now it's all all that stuff is mainstream and it and it yes. and it's instantly once that happens instantly people just start knocking you and start or start trying to take it away from you and that's what yeah yeah you know uniqueness is taken away uh, you know once this yep. started coming into the mainstream you know so yeah it's really cool that you're able to still be you know yourself with it, especially like a shout out to everybody who's listening and has older pairs that just break them out, you know, because mm-hmm. you shouldn't be discouraged to to feel like, all right, oh, I don't have the newest stuff. Like, man, right. fuck who the cares? newest stuff. Yeah. Who cares? I don't even want the newer stuff. <laughs> like, who cares? Wear what you got. Love your collection for what it is. And it's mm-hmm. your collection. It's not supposed to necessarily look like that's the thing. Everybody feels like the collection should be very cookie cutter. Mm-hmm. It's like if you don't have this shoe, this shoe, this shoe, and this shoe, and this shoe, you're not a real sneakerhead. You're mm-hmm. not really, you know, like you said, you're not relevant, which you, you hit it right on the head. It's all about being relevant and how many likes you can get and this and that. And, and, and you know, that that's what everybody's chasing versus just mm-hmm. being authentic to yourself and you like it because you like it. Like I said, people were like, why would you buy those those SBs? You're like, because I liked them. That's why I bought them. Yeah, like, exactly. I've, I've never cared what was popular or what was in or not I could care less like I have people comment like oh those are trash I'd be like thank you for commenting Mm -hmm. I I mean I don't know what you want me to say oh my god I'm gonna take them back I'm gonna throw them away I'm gonna get rid of them because this one person thinks this shoe is trash like they really be like I never liked those I'm like okay well I'm glad you don't have me your collection it's great I mean the the uh, they don't know like because I guess the 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 high school hallways are different now Right. I feel like that's like the biggest this, but I remember, you know, dudes would try to oh, you got new kicks on? They're trying to step on them. They're not trying to right. you know like hate, hate, hate. Hey, hate, hell hate. yeah. You've been hating on my sneakers. <laughs> like, you know, that, <laughs> that 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 now it's like what? Oh, you got how you don't got pandas, man. You gotta have pandas in your collection. Like, oh, man, get out of here. <laughs> I do not have them. 
<laughs> only pandas y'all gonna get out of me is the them right there, the UNO pandas, the mm-hmm. real panda. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I, y'all, I'm sorry. No offense to anybody that has panda dunks, loves them, rocks them. Y'all cannot pay me to buy a pair of those. <laughs> I mean, the only pair, I, and I've made a video about this, is I have the the staple uh, pigeon pandas. Those that's are, different. That's, that's, a, that's, yeah. a, that's a different. That's a different pair. You got the staple joints. I got the UNO. Those are different. That's different than the actual just that white and black just panda that everybody has on that you yeah. see everywhere, <laughs> every day, every day. Uh-uh. It's, Can't do it. I mean, listen, watch it because I'm gonna be like, I, I see. The one thing, and I mean, not to go on a tangent about the pandas, but the one thing was I bought a pair of that, like the, when they did the, all the school colorway dunk, uh, dunks, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I bought a pair of, I got, I, I, I hit on sneakers for the Michigan pair. And mm-hmm. when I got them in, I wore them maybe like a month after or whatever, and I put them on. And obviously nobody's wearing those because it's, it's not, it's not the, the colors that people are just like, oh my God, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I put those on and I realized that these were the most cheaply made dunks I've ever put on my feet. And so that I'm, part. I'm like, <laughs> why, why would I buy a shoe that it's like, it felt like $20. It felt like DSW had these. It was these. like plastic. <laughs> yeah. It was like plastic. And it's like, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't look like the, like if you put them side by side with like SB, like you can see the toe, oh. the toe box and it's like totally different. I'm just like, this is totally not Totally different. Yeah. Even dunks that were made, and all the way up until I say the mid 2000s, mm-hmm. I give it about that point that weren't SBs were still made really good because mm-hmm. I have some. Oh, yeah. That were made, you know, journeys, 14, 15, you, you know, remember when, that were really good. You remember the journeys, like when journeys was dropping a bunch of dunks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those dunks, yeah. I mean, those are undefeated. Quality. Yeah. They're good quality. But these new ones, I think that's why I'm so against it because I'm not paying a hundred and nothing dollars for I have one pair of newer dunks and they feel like plastic. And I was like, yeah, no, I can't do it. I was like, I think I got the uh, which one? It's the Knicks ones, the high oh, ones. Oh yeah, I and that's because so they were on those. sale. Yeah. They were on sale, and so I was like, oh okay. And then I'm like, these feel like plastic. It's like a Barbie shoe. I was like, no. So I'm always giving them the the Lakers joints. All these new, I'm staying away from them because mm-hmm. I know they're gonna be. I'm gonna be pissed because the quality is just like horrible. If it's not an SB dunk these days, your quality is gonna be horrible yeah it's straight it's straight doo-doo <laughs> it's I, horrible i'm very curious were you able to like do like overnights or lineups like we're god i mean you worked in the business yeah, you worked in the business so. i didn't have to yeah so I was gonna that's, say. The, that's the good thing about during that era in time i worked there so i mm-hmm. didn't have to do that which was kind of like i i hear the experience so it's kind of like a catch me too because i knew i could get a pair and i didn't have to go with it but it sounded like it was such an experience and such a time to like bond with people and make friends and y'all would camp mm-hmm. out together so I missed that whole camp out experience because I was actually waking up and probably doing the release you know working mm-hmm. the release so working I it. did not get to do the whole camp out thing so I missed that era yeah. I mean you didn't miss much I would tell you <laughs> <laughs> being freezing cold and sleeping on the floor and I feel like the, the side I feel like the yeah I feel like when I finally did it it was too late for me like I was like I was like man I gotta go to work in the night like I took a day off yeah. for, for this like I was it was too late for me like I needed to be like a kid like like yeah eight, you need to 18, be like 16 yeah. 16 17 18 to be able to like really thug that out no mm-hmm. like during that time I would do the 6 a.m. make the line, like four or five, mm-hmm. six a.m. make the line. Mm-hmm. And that was like the most I would do. I would I couldn't do the overnights because I, I didn't want my mom yelling at me and be like, <laughs> no, nah, you sleeping in the street. What are you homeless? Like, yeah, no, nah, I don't like, want nah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's another thing. I don't think my dad would have allowed that even if I wanted to. I don't think he would allow me to do that. Like, uh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how. I like. I mean, since since you're 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 in North Carolina, so like, what is the sneaker scene now in North Carolina? Because I don't like. Do you guys have boutique shops that are opening up? Or we do. Yeah. We do have boutiques and stuff. I think that they're all. I, I would definitely say. I think it's the same everywhere because mm-hmm. most of what we do now is all online. Right, so yeah. even though we have the boutiques that are popping up, like I try to go and build relationships with those smaller stores, just even if I don't go in there to like buy anything that day, if I see one open up, I go in there just to check it out, mm-hmm. just to chop it up with them. And I guess that's just because that's the time that I came around in. So it's always refreshing when I see 
a, a smaller boutique pop up. So I go in and just chop it up with them. And I'm like, oh my God, you're so cool and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, making friends and networking. I'm like, hey, if you get this shoe in, hit me up because I'm looking for X, Y, and Z. If you mm-hmm. get it in, let me know this is my size. So just trying to build a rapport. But I think it's the same everywhere right now, to be quite honest. I think it's all about being online. If you get, if you got to connect, trying to fight bots trying to fight resellers I, mm-hmm. I think it's the same pretty much everywhere I think all of the cities pretty much have a couple of boutiques here and there you have your main chain stores but pretty much everything is online mm-hmm. I feel like that's majority of what we do is we're here on this and that and on the computer and this and have an iPad trying to see enter this raffle enter that raffle yeah. so it seems it's all just online mm-hmm. it's like not a lot of in-person interaction anymore no, yeah, I mean, I went to, I I talk about it in last week's episode, but I went to, because I, I mean, we know there's a ton of consignment shops popping up every, every, mm-hmm. if it, there, I don't know if you have like, over here, over here in New York, it's every week we get a new weed shop, but it's so. so <laughs> yeah, because it's legal there now, yeah, so, so well, last time I visited, I was yeah. like, wow, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> every block, every block, it's like Everywhere. one or two, I'm like, what is Whole going on? A bunch of lights, green yeah. neons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh there was a moment like right after the pandemic or like towards the tail end of the pandemic it was like new resale shop here new resale shop here 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 mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. and so you know i i went to this one called district one i don't know if you've been and and I it's like i might have heard of it yeah because they're 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 really good at social media so like you know they'll do like steals and stuff like that on on their page and stuff uh and you can go there they'll do like they'll do they they trying to bring back camp outs but for resale for resale interesting so they'll give you like a steal like if you're the first one if you if you camp out uh and you're the first one in line you get you get a shoe for a dollar you get like a yeah you get like a good release shoe for a dollar or something like like that that. that's cool uh but so i went there and and i think that they're starting to bring like a community around it Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm, so like mm -hmm. i'm very curious to see like if that's going to be the new way of like more people are going to be like you know what we're going to do cool stuff around you know that's they should so yeah i like that Mm -hmm. i really like that i really like that like i said i'm trying to get more into like the events and stuff now um even with potentially hosting same a here. couple events you mm-hmm. know so i'm like I, I really would love to see that come back it's just like to me that's the the heart of it and it's i don't know i just that's the community when we say sneaker community that's what i think of now i don't think there is a community i just don't Same. feel it it's just mm-hmm. we buy shoes we hope we get it we might have to pay resale and then we post it on social media and that's it so to me it doesn't feel so like community like it did before so just trying to get that feel back so i love to hear stuff like that i love that they're trying to do something to kind of bring it back to where we can interact with actually interact with each other instead mm-hmm. of just fighting each other online to try to get the same shoe yeah now we <laughs> now we actually got to talk to each other because i went yeah, there and nobody talk talked to, to me no but not even no! one person <laughs> not oh, even no! one person talked to me i went there with Jesus. my friend and so like the, the that's what was fun about like doing the rounds to, at the boutiques like back in the day because you could just go there you talk to the you talk to the, the, yeah, the workers there yeah, yeah and you you just talk it. talk about that stuff then somebody else comes in ask about a shoe and then you'll be like oh yo those are nice yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's how yeah. it used to be so yeah that's but how it used to be as we are at the end of the podcast i have one last question to ask you um mm-hmm. and that is well i want you to visualize this right so okay all right, I want you to think about that moment when you got your air flight turbulences, right? And mm-hmm. it's your little you, right? But mm-hmm. you're <laughs> now, but you're you get to go back in time and you're standing behind yourself right before you're about to open mm. that box. What would you tell yourself? Do not beat these. <laughs> you don't have to wear these all the time and beat them to death mm. because you're going to have a hard time trying to get these back as an adult so please take care of them <laughs> because when I say I dog them I, I wore them they stay nice and I started hooping in them and then I started playing outside in them it just take care of them <laughs> that that would be for a lot of the shoes that I think I got around that time like because I had to fight to try to get them back like oh my god I would love to have those back now mm-hmm. which I'm sure we all have pairs like that we're like dog 
I would kill to have that too. <laughs> like, I don't know where it is. My mom probably threw it away. But take care of it. That that would definitely be what I would tell her. Cherish this shoe because obviously then I didn't know that my best friend wouldn't be with me. You you think automatically we're going to grow old together. Mm-hmm. And it's like, cherish this moment. Cherish this shoe. And yeah, that's what I would tell her. Yeah. Perfectly said. <laughs> Shout out to you. Thank you so much for jumping on this episode, Kiki. Thank you for having me. And for everybody out there, you know what we say each week, wear your kicks. Yes. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,